In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Game Boy Advance emulation up and running on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The Game Boy Advance remains one of my absolute favorite handhelds ever made, and I just enjoy going back and replaying so many of its games. And being able to do so on Xbox Series X and S is just so fun. And today I'm going to show you how to get it set up, so let's dive in. The first step to getting Game Boy Advance games up and running on your Xbox Series X or S is to install RetroArch. In the description is a link to the how to install RetroArch guide that I have on my channel, so if you have yet to do that, please do so now. Also pay attention to the parts about expanding dev mode storage, and how to access your Xbox's internal SSD from PC, as we will be referring to these later on in this video. Now the nice thing about Game Boy Advance emulation is the only thing that is required are Game Boy Advance games. You actually don't need this Game Boy Advance BIOS file I have here, but I'm still going to show you how to place it. The only thing that is required, once again, are Game Boy Advance games. I do have a video on my channel on how to back up your own Game Boy Advance games and BIOS file if you have a large physical collection of them. Alternatively, you can resort to the shady parts of the net to get them, but again, do not ever ask me for a legal download link, such comments will be deleted. And these wonderful games can be in either .gba format, or you could have them zipped, they should work either way. Now, Game Boy Advance games can be run from the internal SSD of your Xbox, or from a USB storage device. If you want to store them internally, just go to your development files network share that you have hopefully set up by this point, because it's just so dang convenient. Go into Windows Apps, find your RetroArch folder, open up the games folder that you created, and then drag your Game Boy Advance games right in there. For my purposes, I'm actually going to store my games on USB. Here that, I don't need that anymore. So I'm just going to grab my Game Boy Advance games folder and put it onto my USB drive. And that is all you need for basic Game Boy Advance setup on the Xbox Series X and S. But optionally, again, you can get a Game Boy Advance BIOS, name it GBA underscore BIOS dot bin, and you could place this into the system folder of your, of your RetroArch install. So again, go to your development files network map, find your system folder, and then just drag it right in. Again, completely optional step. You don't need this file to play your Game Boy Advance games. But once you have your games placed in your drive of choice, go ahead and get everything closed down on your computer and move over to your Xbox. Now back over on your Xbox, get that USB drive inserted, or if you're running everything from internal, just go ahead and boot into RetroArch. And from here we're free to begin loading up GBA content, so one method of doing so is to go to the Load Content tab, navigate to your eDrive if your games are on USB, and select a game, choose the core, and tell it to run. Or if you have them internally, you go to S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch folder, Games folder, find your uh, Game Boy Advance games folder, and uh, same thing. Choose game, select core, tell it to run. I actually don't prefer this process personally. What I like to do instead is make a games playlist so I don't have to navigate so many menus. And my preferred method of doing so is to go to import content. Go down to manual scan, content directory, navigate to the directory your Game Boy Advance games are stored in. So if they're on the internal drive, again, S drive, program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, games folder, GBA games folder, and tell it to scan that directory. For my purposes, I have things on USB, so I'm going to navigate to E, Game Boy Advance games, scan this directory. System name, press right on your D-pad to go down to the Nintendo section here and find Game Boy Advance. Default core, press right on your D-pad to go down to Nintendo. And my favorite Game Boy Advance emulator is still MGBA, so that's the one I'm going to show off today. Next, make sure Scan Recursively is set to on if you have your games uh, separated into subfolders, and if you have them zipped, you can turn Scan Inside Archives on if they don't show up properly otherwise. But once you have those options set the way you need, go ahead and start the scan. And once it's finished, you'll have a new Game Boy Advance section over here, and then all you need to do is go to a game, press A on it, and tell it to run. And if you placed a Game Boy Advance BIOS, you will be greeted with the GBA boot screen. Otherwise, it'll just go directly into gameplay. I like having the BIOS file just because of that authentic feel it gives when you're playing the games. I love that. But there you go. You are now up and running with Game Boy Advance emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. And I just... Again, I love the Game Boy Advance. I love playing these games on bigger screens, even though they don't look that great blown up. But I don't know. Very nostalgic system for me. 
let's go ahead and talk about some of the more advanced core options available to us within RetroArch. So going into our RetroArch quick menu, we could scroll down to options. And our first option is a solar sensor level, and this is for the Boktai games. You can set the intensity of the sun level for gameplay purposes. Next, allow opposing directional input. I'm just going to skip that one. It's more of a specialized thing. You know if you need it or not. Next up, Game Boy Model. This is set to auto detect by default, and for Game Boy Advance games, this is perfectly fine, but more of a useful feature for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but we're going to use a different core for those systems, so we don't really need to worry about it on Game Boy Advance. Next up, use BIOS file if found. If it finds the BIOS file in your system folder, it will give you that Game Boy Advance splash screen when you load up a game, as you just saw. Or you could turn it off if you don't want it. And then skip BIOS intro, same thing. If you want the BIOS file intro not to play, you could turn this option on. But I mean, at that point, you might as well have not have placed one. So use Super Game Boy Borders, we're going to skip that. Idle loop removal, leave this on remove known. Frame skip, we don't need to worry about that on the Xbox Series X and S. Game Boy Advance is going to run flawlessly on this system, so don't even worry about it. Next up, color correction, and this is a really cool one for authenticity's sake. There are two options here, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, so I'm going to turn on the Game Boy Advance color correction. Now, this is going to wash the colors out compared to the native emulated output, but it makes it more authentic to what looking at the Game Boy Advance LCD screen looked like, and I think that's really neat. Again, personal preference on this one, but I think it's friggin' cool. And I'm glad to have the option. Next up is Enter Frame Blending, and this is an option that tries to mimic the ghosting found on a Game Boy Advance LCD screen. There are a number of different options available. Simple, smart, LCD ghosting, accurate, and fast. On the Xbox, we could choose accurate without any performance penalties, and it's just a really cool effect. A lot of people out there will probably not like it because it does make ghosting happen. Like, a lot of people find that undesirable, but as a big fan of the Game Boy Advance and this is what these games have always looked like, I think it's awesome. But personal preference if you want to have that one on. And then just as a demonstration, this is what it looks like if that option is turned on. You can see how things kind of uh, are a little more ghosty, but it's it's authentic. Again, I like it. And it's not overly intrusive like some uh, really bad LCD panels are in the here and now. So I don't know. It's a fun effect. Next up, enable Game Boy Player Rumble. So as the Game Boy Player was released, Game Boy Advance titles were actually developed to detect the hardware and use the GameCube controller to rumble. Really cool effect, not too many things support it, but you can enable the feature here if you want, and then restart the content to take advantage. And our last option is to set the default Game Boy Color Palette. We don't need to worry about that on Game Boy Advance games. But that's going to do it as far as core options within the MGBA core for RetroArch is concerned. Nice and straightforward, I really like it, but if there are settings you want to have set for some games but not others, you can head into Manage Core Options here and save them as a game option. That way, whenever you load up that game, those are the settings that are going to greet you, and it won't be there for every single Game Boy Advance game. But that's going to do it as far as GBA emulation on the Xbox Series X and S is concerned. A very straightforward core. All you really need to do is get your games, put them on a USB drive, and load it up and begin enjoying it. But as always, if you happen to have any questions regarding setup, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now, if you could all do me just the biggest of favors, be sure to hit that thumbs up or thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live on the channel. If you'd like to further help support the channel, also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running, that way we can bring more updated video guides just like this to all of you. And just the biggest of shout outs to all of our current backers. Y'all are champions, rock stars, amazing people for supporting us like this. You have no idea. Thank you all so very much. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.